Namaskar, I'm Harpreet Kaur and I welcome you all to our special live and interactive session which is presented by Department of Education in Science and Mathematics and CERT. Well, this is the 88th session or edition of our webinar series titled Listening to Learn, Yani Sune or CK. And today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic. Yes, this is tuning in, leveling up the art and craft of listening. You are watching this live and interactive session on our eVidya channels 9, 10, 11 and 12 and uh, after the session it will be uploaded on our YouTube channel NCERT official as well. So this session is live and interactive which means that if you have any queries, any doubts or you probably want to share your experiences and feedback with us you are more than welcome to get in touch with us. Our phone number is 880044 0559. We also have an email ID for you which is dth.class9 at ciet.nic.in. Now since this is the 88th edition, it means that we have done 87 sessions earlier. If you want to watch these sessions, you can definitely visit the website and the link for the same is ncert.nic.in slash webinar underscore series dot php this entire information is flashing on your screen so you can take it down very nicely and now you know um coming back to the session which is going to be very interesting we all know that uh, listening is an art it is about um, engagement and attention but it is an art a skill which can be developed by purposeful practice so we will be learning more about it see huh sunni ke kaushal ke baare mein aur zyada janenge but it's time for me to introduce you all to an eminent personality who is sitting next to me, the man behind this entire initiative, Dr. Gagan Gupta from DESM and CERT. Sir, Namaskar and welcome to Namaste, the session. Namaste, Arpitji. And uh, Dr. Gagan Gupta will take this conversation forward from here on and he will interact with another eminent personality that is present with us today. Sir. Namaskar, Dhanyavad, Ji. Arpitji. ये अगस्त 2021 में हमने इस प्रोग्राम को शुरू किया था हमारी कोलैबोरेटर रहे सीएसआईआर इंडिया नेशनल ह्यूमन राइट कमीशन आज हम 88वें 88th पड़ाव पर हैं 88th सेशन है इस बीच में हमने हेल्थ से जुड़े हुए विषयों साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी से जुड़े हुए विषयों अन्य विभिन्न विषयों जैसे कि इंडियाज प्लेनेटरी मिशन इंडियाज न्यूक्लियर प्रोग्राम्स और से जैसे जुड़े हुए विषयों से हमने बहुत बात की स्पेस पर बात की हमने दिल की सैर कराई फेफड़ों की सैर कराई आप लोगों को हमने यदा कदा साइंस के बैटरीज किस तरह से बनेंगी बैटरीज का क्या भविष्य हुआ इन सब चीज़ों पर बात की एनर्जी सोर्सेज पर बात की वाटर रिसोर्सेज पर बात की एनवायरनमेंट से जुड़े हुए बहुत सारे विषयों पर बात की आपको याद होगा ये सारे प्रोग्राम्स आप हमारे एन के वेबसाइट पर एन के इवेंट सेक्शन में अगर आप जाएं तो आपको वहां पर सारे प्रोग्राम्स मिल जाएंगे साथ साथ ये सारे प्रोग्राम हमारे यूट्यूब चैनल यूट्यूब एन सी ऑफिशियल पर भी मिलेंगे आप इन सबको देखिए यदा कदा हम साइंस और टेक्नोलॉजी से हटकर के भी बात की है इस आशा में कि एक साइंटिफिक टेम्पर के साथ हम चीज़ों को देखें हमने एवरेस्ट की सैर कराई आप इस, इस क्रम में हमने एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप के बारे में बात की हमारे साथ मुंबई डब्बा वाले पवन अग्रवाल अलीना आलम मिट्टी कैफे मेघा अग्रवाल ऐसे लोग हमारे साथ जुड़े हमारे साथ स्टूडियो में आए हमने एक अगस्त 21 में ही 2021 में ही हमने एक शो किया था जो कि 21 सेशन 21 और सेशन 22 और 23 थे जनवरी 21 2022 को हमने शो किए जिसमें हमारे साथ प्रोफेसर के पी मोहनन थे पुणे से जुड़े थे और उन्होंने हमसे बात की थी हाउ टू लर्न टू रीजन बाय लिसनिंग हमने ये बात की थी दो शो हुए थे उसी क्रम में हमने आगे हमारा सत्तावनवा शो फिफ्टी सेवेंथ शो इसमें कि हमारे स्कूल ही जो कि आज भी हमारे साथ हैं प्रोफेसर एच एस कॉमलेशा आई खड़कपुर से हमारे साथ जुड़े थे और इन्होंने हमसे बात की थी ये था जुलाई सात 2023 हज़ार शो 
इस पर हमने बात करी थी विस्परिंग वर्ड्स हाउ टू रीड ए पोइम एंड फॉल इन लव विद इट बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग शो था उसी समय मुझे याद है मेरे दोस्त प्रोफेसर कोमलेश ने हमने से हमसे बात की थी कहा था कि भाई आपके प्रोग्राम का नाम है लिसनिंग टू लर्न तो आप थोड़ी सी बात आर्ट ऑफ लिसनिंग पर भी कीजिए हम तैयार हुए हम माफ़ी चाहते हैं कि हम काफ़ी देर के बाद लगभग डेढ़ साल के बाद इस प्रोग्राम को कर रहे हैं आज फिर से मेरे साथ आईटी खड़कपुर से प्रोफेसर एच एस कोमले शाह एक बार फिर से जुड़े हैं मैं अभी आपकी उनसे मुलाकात कराता हूं वो आज आर्ट ऑफ लिसनिंग के साथ हमसे बात करेंगे आज का उनका टाइटल जैसे मेरी साथी हरप्रीत ने कहा ट्यूनिंग इन लेवलिंग अप द आर्ट एंड क्राफ्ट ऑफ लिसनिंग हिंदी में हम कहें सुनने की कला और कौशल जुड़ाव के माध्यम से उत्कृष्टता की ओर हमें परफेक्शन की तरफ जाना है आपसे मैं उम्मीद करता हूं कि आप प्रोफेसर के पी मोहनन के भी सेशन को सुने हमारे पास आ, हमारी वेबसाइट पर है यूट्यूब एन ऑफिशियल पर भी है और आज के इस प्रोग्राम को उसी क्रम में आगे देखें तो आज हम किस तरह से सुने और किस तरह से बात करें और समझें आज इस पर हम बात करेंगे प्रोफेसर कोमलेशा मेरे साथ हैं प्रोफेसर कोमलेशा आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है हमारे साथ जुड़ने में हमारे साथ आज के इस प्रोग्राम में एक बार फिर से जुड़ने में नमस्कार प्रोफेसर कोमलेशा थैंक यू नमस्कार नमस्कार टू बोथ ऑफ यू इट्स रियली अ प्लेजर जॉइनिंग यू एंड यू नो ऑफ कोर्स इट्स आल्सो अ प्लेजर टू बी इंटरेक्टिंग विद ऑल योर लिसनर्स आई एम रियली लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू बी इंटरेक्टिंग यस 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 सो दोस्तों मैं शुक्रगुजार हूं हमारी संस्था मेरा विभाग हम धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करते हैं प्रोफेसर एच एस कोमलेशा को और साथ में ही भारतीय प्रौद्योगिक संस्थान खड़कपुर खड़कपुर को भी आईआईटी खड़कपुर को भी और हमारा पूरा विश्व आईआईटी खड़कपुर से हमारा नाता रहा है बैटरीज के बारे में हमारे साथ सबसे पहले डॉक्टर वेनी माधव थे और आगे आने वाले दिनों में भी वहाँ से हमारे साथ और लोग भी जुड़ेंगे प्रोफेसर कोमलेशा का स्वास्थ्य थोड़ा ठीक नहीं है तो इसलिए आज वो हमारे साथ दिल्ली में मौजूद नहीं है खड़गपुर से जुड़ रहे हैं वैसे खड़गपुर का भी मौसम आज बड़ा अच्छा है प्लीजेंट है और दिल्ली का भी मौसम बहुत प्लीजेंट है दिल्ली में बहुत खूबसूरत खुशनुमा माहौल है और ये मौसम भी बहुत अच्छा है आज मुझे पूरी उम्मीद है कि सुनने की कला के ऊपर आप बहुत आनंद लेंगे प्रोफेसर कोमलेशा मेरे दोस्त हैं और अब मैं आपकी मुलाकात कराता हूं अपने दोस्त प्रोफेसर कोमलेशा से डॉक्टर एच एस कोमलेशा हु इज़ प्रजेंटली ए प्रोफेसर इन ऑफ इंग्लिश एट इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी खड़गपुर वेस्ट बंगाल ही स्टडी from mysore university of mysore and then obtained his doctoral degree from the iit khadakpur itself and he is now with the professor with the department of humanities and social sciences at khadakpur very eminent linguist he has seven books and about 60 research articles and translations to his credit rolls which is a multinational uk based publisher very reputed london and new york in 2021 has brought out veneration to the elders an english translation of the earliest extant kannada prose work written by circa 940 ce nearly 1100 1200 years before it was translated by professor komilesha along with the team of experts peter lang oxford has also published his critical book issues of identity in english fiction a close reading of canonical indian english novels the central sahitya academy the national academy of letters in india has published three of his books namely adoration of the ancients in 2022 the 2022 rashtrakavi kovempu 2014 and anupama nirjana 2008 komlesha has also translated and published sankranti which was published by sampark publishers kolkata in 2011 which is an iconic play written by a modernist कनाडा राइटर पी लंकेश 
Komilesha teaches and researches in the penumbral species of poetry, translation, communication, gender and culture studies. So, dosto, ab aap, main, uh, aapke aur Komilesha sahab ke beech se hatta hoon. Komilesha sahab, aapka ek baar phir se swagat hai aur it is all yours, please. Thank you, thank you so much uh, Professor Gagan Gupta and of course Ms. Kaur for a very warm introduction. I am really indebted to both of you, you know, for accommodating me. You are absolutely right, I recall having this conversation with you about listening because the entire program is envisioned based on the potential of listening. That's why your entire webinar series is called Listening to Learn. So I was just wondering if the entire webinar series is on the potential of learning and the philosophical underpinnings behind listening, why not have an exclusive session for your students, for your listeners on, uh, you know, on the very art and craft of listening. That's the reason why we have come up with this uh, you know, equally pleasant uh, topic. In fact, as you said, the weather is pleasant both in Delhi and Karakpur, hopefully across India. and. Uh, with this pleasant topic, we are going to, you know, uh, very shortly begin our understanding of listening in a little more deeper uh, way. <clears throat> in fact, as the conversation rolls up, you understand, uh, you know, you unfurl the meaning of tuning in and how tuning in can level up. What is this art called uh, listening and what is this craft called listening and all that. Before that, you know, I really welcome all the listeners and I really look forward to interacting with you uh, through this uh, uh, interactive session. Before we begin on listening, here are some fun facts. Though I call them fun facts, these are some very interesting facts that are going to give you some uh, radical insights into understanding the very potential of listening as such. Now, look at this. You've been at least uh, 15 years, 16 years, and some of us who are listening are also close to 50 years, 60 years. Whatever we have learned in our life, 85% of it, imagine more than three-fourth, more than three-fourth of what we know today in our life is through listening. Not through speaking, not through reading, but through listening alone. More than 85% of whatever we know is through listening. And another interesting fact is, well, on an average, you know, average, an average person listens to about 20,000 to 30,000 words in a day. Well, of course, uh, saving exceptions like, uh, you know, students like you and me who have to listen to various lectures, we might even increase it by another 10,000 words. But on an average, all of us will listen to about 25 to 30,000 words in a day. And out of these words that we hear, we can recall more than 50% or just about 50%, you know, immediately we can recall because based on what we have heard, we can recall 50%, probably in the first half an hour. After an hour, the ability to recall that reduces to 20% if it's a casual listening. In fact, what we are going to discuss today is if we apply the mindful practices of listening, we can, of course, increase this ability to recall after an hour to more than 30 percent or more than 40 percent if we can even after a day, even after a month or something like that. Now, look at this. If our capacity to speak is just about 150 words per minute, our capacity to listen is about 500 words. It's about five times more than what we can speak. That means our ability to listen is more than five times, you know, than our ability to speak. That's our potential to listening. Of course, that's the reason why anatomically speaking, somebody says that we have two ears and a tongue, therefore we should listen more. In fact, all of us believe in speaking more and listening less, whereas the effectiveness of communication as a teacher of communication and as a researcher in communication. Let me tell you this, that the effectiveness of communication comes more from listening than from speaking. These are some fun facts that you can keep in mind in order to understand listening and its potential. All right. Now, here are some philosophical underpinnings of uh, listening. Just I'm not going to discuss in depth about them because these are some uh, pieces of wisdom that you have to carry within you. They might even keep resonating uh, across your life. So 
listen to this you know listening is called the mother of speaking now do you agree with it why is it the clue to understanding this is simple a newborn baby how do you think a newborn baby develops the art i mean art of uh, you know acquiring language except through listening in fact it's only the first one or two years the baby listens to everything and based on what it has grasped it can speak then gradually read and write so it's a clue to understanding this philosophical concept please think about it and therefore you can even go to the extent of calling you know language itself begins with listening and here is a kind of a meditative uh, you know quote on listening in fact if there is anything that is closer to the concept of meditation tapasya tapasya concept of tapasya ke liye if there is any concept closer then that's what is listening i would call it it's listening why is it we are going to discuss in subsequent slides now li listen to this true listening requires the discipline to silence the noise within us so that we can hear the truth in others how beautiful right in order to listen to the truth when speaker speaks something in order to listen to the truth behind it we must learn to silence the voice within and listen to that kind of you know uh, our listening has the capacity to bring out these kind of things that's the reason why you have saint bernard saying you wish to see all of us are in a hurry to see on the other hand let's listen hearing is a step closer to its achieving that vision you know that's what he says now before we begin with different types of listening how do we enhance our listening potential and all those kinds of things here is a very fundamental activity that i want all of you to do even at a later stage the activity is very simple you know just pick up a, a notepad and start writing down your answers to these two questions i'm sure you've listened to many people right who are the people it's very easy to listen to so you must have met so many people in your life just pause for a while close your eyes and then recall at least 3 to 4 people you are you, you would love to listen to them and then the reasons behind uh, why it is easy to listen to them similarly you can you can recall a couple of people who it's very difficult to listen to it and then of course the reasons behind it so this is just to you know uh, activate uh, your own understanding of listening once you do this intuitively you will be able to grasp you know the art and craft of listening okay this is an activity for you that's something that you can do at a later stage now why is it that we listen you know of course one simple answer is we have the auditory organs we've been gifted with two auditory organs our ears that's the reason why we listen but behind this question is a, is the reason you know why actually we listen we listen of course uh, remember listening is always context specific you know depending on the situation we listen to people sometimes we are forced to listen to people on the other hand we are interested to listen to some other people more than that of course uh, if you are in an interview you are you are again compelled to listen to the interviewer and respond to uh, what of the questions they have asked so there are various reasons that's the reason why we say listening is context driven okay so accordingly based on the different reasons you have we can classify listening you know on the verticals of the reasons behind listening we can classify listening as inferential listening sometimes we listen to for pleasure when you are listening to a radio when you are watching television you listen to them so that you know you can gain some pleasure intensive listening in fact when we are listening to lectures for instance as you are listening now we can call it immersive listening as well intensive listening immersive listening and in fact there's a beautiful uh, phrase in english called to be all ears have you heard of this phrase to be all ears as if you know your entire body is reduced to one huge giant organ of uh, you know listening to be all ears that means to listen to each and everything as if to absorb things through 
uh, that listening activity. So these are the various things that you can keep in mind. These are the reasons. Sometimes we listen to evaluate people. When you sit in an interview, you have to listen to them so that you assess who is better, who is suitable for the job and all that. Sometimes, as I said, when you sit in a movie theater, when you are listening to what, I mean, any commentary, you are listening to it for the sake of pleasure. So there are various reasons for us to listen to it. All right. Now, these are based on those various reasons. We can broadly classify listening into three types. You know, these are three broad types. These are not any hard and fast rules. In fact, uh, many people even can classify them into 10 different types. Forget all that. These are the broad, you know, types of listening based on, of course, your reason, context, situation, and all that. One is critical listening. The other is empathetical listening. The third is reflective listening. What do you mean by critical listening? In fact, it's not that, uh, you know, I mean, when if you're a critical listener, it's not that you're not an empathetic listener. It's not like that. As I said, depending on the context, you activate these listening profiles. When you're doing a critical listening, you focus on, let's say, as I said, when you're listening to people in order to evaluate them, in order to assess whether they're suitable for the job you're about to hire them for, you have to apply critical listening skills. When you apply critical listening skills, you focus on whether what they are speaking is coherent, and then you analyze what they are speaking with, you know, whether there is any consistency in that. Based on this, you make judgments. Therefore, it's one broad type critical listening skills so that you can evaluate, analyze, assess people you are listening to. The other is empathetic listening. In fact, this is precisely what many of us keep doing at most of the point, at many points of, uh, you know, uh, at many points in our life. Because when a friend comes and, uh, you know, cries, when a friend comes and shares their joys and woes, you listen to them. It's called empathetic listening. In fact, empathetic listening is also what a counselor does. What counselors do when you go and, uh, you know, tell them your problems, when you confess uh, your problems to them, counselors, so that they can listen to you as carefully as, uh, as uh, they want to, and they can empathize with you and offer you some kind of, you know, solutions to help you overcome your problems, right? That's what is called empathetic listen listening. And in order to unleash this empathetic listening, you need to, you know, tune in with their emotions, thoughts, and perspectives. There is no scope for you to be judgmental here, analyze them. No, you just have to, you have to sync yourself with what they're speaking and understand that. The third is reflective listening. Reflective listening happens when you sit in a classroom, when you sit through a lecture, and therefore you assess whatever the information that's reaching you through your ears, you vet it against the information that you already know, you assess whether it is correct, whether you're getting to learn something new or not. So these are the you know focus areas for reflective listening. So therefore, these are three broad types of listening that we can consider for our sake. Before we proceed and see how we can enhance our listening potential, let's also, you know, be conscious about what prevents us from being good listeners, you know. What are the reasons? In other words, what are the barriers to effective listening? So here are the barriers. On the one side, you have you have distractions. The, on the other hand, you have some strategies to overcome those distractions. When I say distractions, there can be physical barriers like noise outside. You're listening to a lecture. There is a drilling machine that's working and you're unable to focus on it. There's an AC machine creating a lot of noise, a fan working, somebody shouting in the corridors. So these are physical, you know, noise. Sometimes there are internal noises, you know, you're disturbed. There is some kind of an emotional crisis in your life. Therefore, you're unable to focus both, uh, you know, noise outside, noise without, noise within. And these are some kind of, you know, distractions. More than that, you also have prejudices. The moment you listen to somebody, let's say, for instance, you're listening to Professor Gagan Gupta, Miss Kaur, you're trying to listen, listen to me. On the other hand, just by looking at, uh, you know, our appearance or our accent or maybe our the way we have dressed, if certain, you know, biases 
uh, trigger in you, then that may effectively prevent you from listening to them properly because you're already biased. Oh, look at this guy. Here is a South Indian accent. How can I accent a South Indian accent? Or here is a person speaking in a Bihar accent. How do I understand this Bihar accent? Or a UPX, something like that, you know. These are various uh, irrational prejudices that many of us have. In fact, most of us have these prejudices. One of the effective things to overcome, you know, I mean, one of the important ways to enhance our listening skills is to overcome these preconceptions and prejudices and biases. That's something that you can keep in mind. The other thing is, this is what some bright students do. When they're listening to, you know, either a lecture or maybe their teacher, before even they listen to what they're, you know, what the teacher is saying or what the speaker is saying, they already, you know, start, you know, configurating the questions they can ask. Even before you absorb the information, you start, you know, your mind starts popping out a question. Achha, isko kya question hum pooch sakte hai? Kaise impress kar sakte hai? You know, so that's something that we can, we should avoid. In order to be an effective listener, you must suppress, you know, pre-formulating responses, you know, before listening. You know, after listening, fine. But before listening, don't, you know, don't allow your mind, you don't allow your brain to pop out questions to ask them. And another thing is avoid multitasking because, of course, we say that we live in a fast age where people believe in multitasking, simultaneously doing this, doing that, doing this. An immersive listening or a deep listening is a complex uh, neurological activity in itself. Therefore, there is no scope for you to keep multitasking. I'm listening, I'm reading, text, I'm WhatsApp, I'm replying. In order to be an effective listener, you know, avoid doing multitasking because, as I said, listening is as deep as doing meditation, as deep as tapasya. Only when you can elevate your listening to the level of a tapasya can we be able, I mean, can we absorb everything that is being said, you know, that's the power of listening these are some barrier barriers that you can keep in mind and this is how you can overcome them all right now in fact uh, if you have gone through the abstract we say that we are going to you know uh, uh, analyze the range of practices that are available to you know listening from the ancient mindfulness practices of listening to contemporary uh, neuroscience developments research de research and developments in contemporary neuroscience what what does neuroscience say about you know listening what kind of cognitive processes uh, you know are involved in these kind of things so here is uh, you know uh, some in, in a nutshell this is what uh, you know contemporary neuroscience says about uh, listening and uh, what does your brain do when when it involves when it engages itself in listening you know listening is more often than not you may not realize this it involves a complex cognitive functions they are triggered by you know the stimuli of the words they are they are triggered by the stimuli of words when a speaker speaks you know the words are capable of triggering they are acting as stimuli they can trigger complex you know cognitive functions here you can distinguish between you know there are two verbs in english related to this you know hearing and listening i'm sure you know the difference between it right hearing is a passive activity that means whether you put any effort or not you know noise or voice keeps falling onto your ear you are not putting any, any effort at all still you can you can hear people, you know, chatting around, as I said, you know, in a, if you're sitting in a room, a fan running and all that. You don't need to put any, it's an involuntary activity. Hearing is an involuntary activity, whereas listening is a voluntary activity. That's why I always tell my students in a classroom with any authority in the world, you know, whoever the authority may be, they can only make you hear them. They can't make you listen to them because you can only when you are involved, only you can listen to people. Others can make you hear them. Only when you want, you can listen to them. Understand, try to understand the difference between listening and hearing. Hearing is a passive activity. Listening is an active activity. All right. 
And when we listen, in fact, look at the images that I've shown in the slide. The first is, you know, the image of us, I mean, these kind of images are taken, you know, or PET scans, what you call positron emission tomography scans or functional magnetic resonance MRI, MRI scans reveals, you know, you know, the first one is your brain when it is at a regular thing, you know, when it's not listening, when it's not focused on anything, that's the picture. Now look at it while listening, look at the image of a brain, look at the a complex, you know, you know, uh, physiological things that are there, you know, happening there that shows the level of activity your brain is engaged in the level of processing that's happening there, you know, in real time, this is this is happening in real time, because when your brain engages in listening, what does it do? It keeps organizing the new information that's coming in. It keeps prioritizing. It keeps segregating. It also keeps evaluating information. And then, you know, look at this. Look at the range of things. Organizing, prioritizing, evaluating, processing the information. And then it also vets this information against what you already know because when you're listening to it, you keep applying what you're gathering with what you already know, right? So your brain is capable of doing all this simultaneously. All this simultaneously. That's the reason why if you can unleash the potential of listening, you know, we call, in fact, uh, contemporary neuroscience uses the word called, you know, uh, brain plasticity, you know, plasticity, neural plasticity. It means capacity to expand, you know, your capacity to expand your brain, you know, it's capable of expanding your, your mental faculties. That's what is called plasticity. Your listening can unleash, you know, it can unleash that kind of potential in us. It can also expand our horizons, right? We keep saying that listening expands our horizon. The horizon is not, uh, you know, not something which is there. It's, it, it expands the horizon of the mindscape. That's precisely what we can keep in mind. In fact, this is just to show the complexity involved in the process of listening, just to make you understand this. It's not that something that you don't know, but I'm trying to show through these pictures, you know, I'm trying to make you consciously understand uh, the cognitive functions triggered by uh, our listening. Now comes the power of, uh, you know, deep listening. What do you mean by deep listening? As I said, listening itself is a deeper activity, but deep listening is all the more prioritizing listening as if there is nothing at this moment, as if there is nothing other than listening. The whole purpose of your life at the point of listening is only listening, nothing other than that. That's what is called deep listening. Imagine deep listening has you know it resonates with you know deep meditation that's the reason why we use the word deep listening you know it is it's similar to deep meditation when you when somebody comes and tries to speak with you pay closer attention to them you know as i said avoid doing multitasking listen to them as if you know that's the topmost priority because when you are listening to people it has the effect of cleansing your own emotions. That's why, in fact, Greek philosophers called this a cathartic effect, catharsis. They said when you're watching a play, especially it was this concept was developed, you know, in the context of Greek drama. When you're watching a play and when you're listening to the emotionally charged dialogues, then it is capable of purging the internal turmoils within you. That's the reason why we say that listening is, you know, it has a therapeutic value. It is capable of healing us. When you listen to people, it has the cap capability of healing, not just you, it also has the capacity to heal the other person. Metaphorically speaking, listening is like a panacea. Panacea is like a, an all-powerful ointment. When you apply it against any wound, it is capable of, you know, making the wound heal faster. You know, listening is capable of healing the mental wounds faster. That's the reason why you must lend yourself totally when you are listening to them. And when we say listening, it takes the concept of communication to beyond the surface level thing, you know. When we speak, most of the times when we engage in conversation, it's, it's surfacial. But when you can listen to some people, when you can listen to them 
with your entire you know focus on what they are speaking then it can take listening it can take communication to an altogether new level capable of of course forging permanent relationships here is a quick fix most of you keep saying that you know that's one of the proper complaints from your generation right that i don't have many good friends i don't have a lot many friends here is a secret to making friends what is the secret when somebody comes and tells you anything listen to them totally without doing other things listen to them totally you will realize within 6 months the number of friends you know it's like multiplied you know three times more four times more listening is like a quick fix to making good friendships because listening is the highest form of respect you can pay to anybody listening is the highest form of respect reverence we call it reverence reverential it has a reverential quality that's the reason why you have you know peter drucker he is uh, maybe when you come towards graduation you listen to this uh, you know you come across this thinker he's a management thinker philosopher you know he says the most important thing in communication is hearing what isn't said it's not of course everybody hears what is said but when you listen to them totally you can also listen to what is not being said it might sound paradoxical but it's not a paradox you know and please remember this when you listen deeply you begin seeing things when you listen to people very deeply you begin seeing things of course not hearing you begin seeing things listening has the capacity to you know activate even the faculty of seeing that's what you know uh, that's a transformative capacity that uh, you know listening has here is mindful listening in fact we understood uh, you know uh contemporary development contemporary scientific development in listening and all that here is what uh, our ancient mindfulness uh, uh, you know practices say about listening what is mindful listening mindful listening like when you are meditating what do you do when you meditate you know when you meditate you do not focus on what is happening around you you start people say that when you meditate you focus on uh, only one object and start you know seeing them but if you go a little deep, deeper one of the gurus was telling me this when i was interacting one of the gurus was telling me this when you meditate it's more than seeing you start listening to the internal voices and when you start listening to them deeply they have the capacity to disappear on your own in other words when you listen to yourself it's like you know listening is external people always say listening is external because whatever the sound that comes from outside you listen to it here in mindful listening it's inverted the function of listening is almost inverted as if you know you listen to what is coming from within you you invert the you invert the scope of listening to within you and start you know listening to what is coming from within you and the moment you start focusing on that automatically that kind of listening has the capacity to silence the disturbances within you you know it has the capacity to silence the disturbances within you and that's the closest state that you can go to attaining some kind of you know nirvana or uh, total i mean you know what we call uh, you know total surrendering to something beyond you right that's the reason why i always keep telling my students that if there is one activity which is capable of taking you closer to the concept of meditation then it's absolutely listening not speaking not read reading to a certain extent but not listening i mean not speaking not writing but of course definitely listening something like that so that's the mindful listening focuses on tuning into ourselves in fact tuning is a tuning in is a beautiful phrase we use for you know you tune into a certain radio channels frequencies and all that you know when you're listening to an fm you you tune into certain frequencies and listen to it similarly you tune in when you tune into what is happening within you then you can level up level up is you can you can definitely come up in life you can come definitely come up in life that's for, that's the reason why we say that you know tuning in is effective way of elevating yourself seeing success in your personal life as well as professional life you know something like that and when you mindfully listen to others as i said it means 
you are respecting and genuinely engaging with the speaker. That's the reason why I said a little while ago that listening is the true respect that you can give to people you love and admire. The truest form of respect is when you listen to them totally, you know, when you listen to them totally. This is what mindful listening says about, uh, you know, uh, listening. Here then a question comes, how can we practice mindful listening? How do we enhance our listening skills? Remember, like acquiring success in any activity, mindful listening too takes a lot of time. Takes a lot of time. Obviously, it's not something that you do overnight. Keep practicing, you know, practicing. Here is the first step. Re remove all the, you know, distractions. When you are trying to listen to somebody, remove all the distractions, all the distractions from outside, from within you, and start listening to them. You start empathizing with people, empathize, right? There's another, another English, lovely phrase in English called to put yourself in someone else's shoes. That means try to imagine if you were in that situation, how would you do? What would you do? Something like that. You're empathizing with them. So way, one of the effective ways to empathize is when you listen to them. Look now how listening is associated with various qualities. We've been, you know, it is obviously associated with communication. It's obviously associated with, you know, uh, meditation. It's obviously associated with making relationships. It's obviously associated with enhancing your, you know, mental activity. It's obviously associated with, uh, you know, expanding your horizons. It's obviously enhanced, I mean, interconnected with, uh, you know, uh, forging good relationships. Listening is interconnected with various things in life. It's absolutely interconnected with various connect, I mean, things in life. That's the reason why, in fact, uh, one of the visionaries who designed this program for you, listening to learn, you know, in fact, that's precisely what they had in mind. That's why they called it listening to learn. Learn is not just academic learning, learning about life, learning about yourself, you know. One of the principles of, you know, self-actualization is know then thyself, you know. Only when you know yourself can you know the world outside you. That's the reason why you have, you know, Shankaracharya calling yourself, you know, Aham Brahmasmi. It's not out of arrogance that he said Aham Brahmasmi. When you start listening to the deeper voices within you, you realize, you know, the greater voices, the greater presence that's outside is also there within you. All that you have to do is tuning into that. It's only a person who has understood the full potential of listening can say that kind of a statement. See, I mean, you know, the beautiful potential of listening, right? And another important technique that you can keep in mind in order to enhance mindful listening is focus on breathing. This is something even your gurus might say when, when you are being initiated into, you know, uh, meditation, focus on breathing. One of the important concepts is, of course, when you focus on breathing, you can, you know, you can forget, you can forget the distractions around you. These are some things that you can keep in mind for enhancing, you know, uh, your potential. So here are some uh, important traits that you can, uh, you know, keep in mind. These are called seven uh, active listening traits listen to people you know there are many of course here are something that you can keep in mind you know seven active listening traits when you're listening to people pay full attention as if that's the sole purpose of your life at that time at that time when you're listening to people that's the sole objective of your life hinges on the activity of listening pay full attention empathize with them don't try to judge them when 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 people are Telling you something, don't try to judge them. Analyze, I mean, analysis comes later. I'm not saying that you take everybody at the face value because no, in fact, that's, that takes away the reason. I'm not saying at the moment of listening to them, suspend, temporary suspension of, you know, your judgment. Temporarily suspend that, you know, judgment. And then, of course, listen to them. After you listen to them, then analyze, do whatever you want to do. At that time, empathize with them. If you are sitting and listening in a classroom, you can ask open-ended questions. In fact, this a couple of them are related to classroom listening or you know, seminar listening, webinar listening. Oh, so engage in open-ended questions. More than that, when you listen to somebody with, you know, 
you also pay attention to the non-verbal cues not just you know that's the reason why in fact uh, that peter drucker says that when you you know key to effective communication is you know not hearing what people say but also seeing what they listening to what they don't say that happens when you focus on non-verbal cues avoid interruptions develop a judgment free attitude and later after completing listening reflective feedback reflective feedback these are some things that you can keep in mind these are the active traits seven active traits that you can keep in mind so in this slide what we're going to focus on is this is something that's available easily on the internet you know you can just search this you know listening style profile listening style profile so all of us have our own listening profiles you know here is a small interactive uh, you know survey that you can take this is something that's available openly on the internet you can search listening profile and answer the questions and analyze it in fact uh, a listening profile is like a set of attitudes or beliefs about uh, listening it's a style of listening there are four basic basically there are four styles of listening according to the research carried out by you know graham the body debra worthington and christopher uh, gerhardt it's a it's a research article published in communication quarterly it's called the listening style profile listening style profile here what happens is there are some 12 questions and here is a matrix that you can keep in mind so when you read the question question 1 que to question 12 read the questions then out of the seven options strongly agree disagree somewhat disagree unsure i agree i agree strongly so what is the answer when you when let's say for instance here is the first question when listening to others i focus on any inconsistencies any inconsistencies or errors in what's being said do you agree with the statement if you agree to what extent you agree i agree i somewhat agree you click that somewhat agree that means for the first question your score is 5 or if you think i strongly disagree then you put circle 1 1 and your score for uh, you know first question is 1 something like that keep doing it then to later you bring out your score depending on your score then we can analyze it and say what is your listening style you know this is something that you can do obviously we can't do this activity here so here is something that you do so here is a classification out of the 12 questions you have as i said there are four listening styles and the questions are here to assess which is your dominant listening style you know here is the first listening style what are those listening styles i'm i'm discussing it in the next slide i'm going to discuss it in the subsequent slide for the first listening style calculate your score in question number 2 question number 7 question number 11 2711 are question numbers one the roman capital letters you know numerals they are for the listening style 1 listening style 2 listening style 3 listening style 4 271 arabic ones are the question numbers so assess your marks total the marks let's say for for instance if your mark for question number 2 is 5 5 for question number 7 3 5 plus 3 8 for question number 11 you know 3 plus 3 11 something like that so for for style 1 your score is 11 for style 2 your score is 18 for score 3 your score is 23 for style 4 your score is 14 that means you have a strong style 3 it, that means you have a strong 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 style 3 so what are these styles let's see here the first style of listening that means if you have a highest score in this one, first one, that means you are a relational listener. What do you mean by relational listening? You believe that listening is basically to enhance relationship. When you listen to people, you empathize with them, you understand their feelings, you tune in to what they say, therefore you can forge a relationship with them. You are an ideal candidate to be in the fields of counseling, you are an ideal candidate to be in the fields of management and these kind of things. You are an ideal candidate to be in the field of HR, things like that. You are a problem solver because you listen to people as attentively as possible. Therefore, your listening style, your listening profile is relational. You are a relational listener. That means out of the four styles, if first one, 
you have got highest score in first one, that means you are a relational listener. Okay, so this is something that you can keep in mind. If you have got a higher score in the second category. This means it's an analytical listening. That means when you are listening to people, this is your natural trait. I'm not say, trying to say that you have to excel in one of them. Yeah, in fact, we are going to wind up in a very short while. I'll just take about a couple of minutes. We'll wind it up. So that means it's not that you should not do others. I'm, I'm, we are trying to identify which is your natural style. Once you identify your dominant listening style, then you can focus on your other listening style. We need to be excellent in all the four of them. First, we are trying to analyze, I mean, the listening style that we are really good at, natural, innate. Then we can focus on other things. So you are a good analytical listener. When you are listening to others, you can analyze the information. You can appreciate the point of view there. You can also enjoy a complex uh, you know, uh, challenge. And then you can solve it based on your listening skill, something like that. The third is task-oriented listening. That means if you have got a higher score here, you listen to people so long as it completes your task. You are not distracted by other styles. Your focus of listening is only to enhance the task at hand. You know, Therefore, you are absolutely good at time management. You basically focus on points. There is no scope for beating around the bush. Come to the points, something like that. The fourth one is critical listening. That means when you are, if this is your dominant trait, that means you are focusing on, you focus on the mistakes that people do, you know, then you point it out to them. You are a thorough uh, critical listener. You spot errors, inconsistencies. You point it out to them, something like that. As I said, all of them are important. Identify your dominant natural uh, style and then focus on the areas that you're weak. You know, these are something that you can absolutely do. All right. So these are uh, the four listening profiles that you have in mind. With these things, we have come to a uh, we are coming to a conclusion. In fact, uh, right from for centuries, people have been practicing, uh, you know, certain strategies to optimize, you know, uh, their listening things. In fact, from mindfulness practices, if you focus on mindfulness practices, it helps you remove barriers and of course especially buddhism it emphasizes on the importance of attentive listening and how it is capable of bringing about inner peace and all that so uh, and it also says listening is to be able to be present live in the present we say right listening is the uh, i mean can help you achieve that and when it comes to modern science we learn that how it strengthens certain neural pathways associated with problem solving skills retention recalling abilities and all that so and how listening also enhances the plasticity of the brain and how it can promote cognitive functions and your emotional intelligence skills and all that you know so that's the reason why in this presentation we focused on the convergence of <coughs> wisdom with the present scientific evidence so that we can deploy listening to make the most in our life all right i hope you enjoyed this presentation thank you it was really a pleasure interacting with you in case there are some questions uh, or some feedback i'd be happy to receive thank you very much uh, great great my dear friend dr komlesha uh, laga nahi ki kahin beech mein kuch uh, main hate ho so uh, you spoke about four styles of analytical listening i try to assess myself and really found closer to analytical listener <laughs> like, thank you very much Ma mathematics professors are always analytical sub oh that's great <laughs> <laughs> yes you are right though you are i am a physicist but i value mathematics first so if uh, we have started with mathematics uh, uh, i mean well, let me just uh, first uh, confess that all the questions which we are receiving or which were coming to our mind either to me or my friend uh, Harpreet here, you have already answered those, <laughs> you have already answered those. But uh, now that we have come to the mathematics, many a times mathematicians say that smelling is the first thing which a child learns after birth and through smelling the child classifies the patterns and with this justification or with this observation math many of the mathematicians and I also belong to the same group who believe 
that mathematics is the first thing a child learn. Now, you talked about listening, uh, uh, our psychological friends and the medicine friends often make that child starts listening and then speaking probably after 3 months of birth. How do you compare the two situations, the two state, the, the two kind of feelings? Uh, uh, I do not want to say mathematicians versus linguists, but I want to see the perspective. All right. Now, in fact, here the entire see that's something that uh, you know probably if there is a kind of a, a, a conflicting opinion between uh, mathematicians and let's say uh, you know uh, doctors, then uh, probably further research needs to be there. My focus was on, see, in language learning, there are four stages of language learning. We call it LSRW, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So the first faculty of, uh, you know, language learning begins with listening. Only when you're a good listener, can you begin speaking. And once when you have acquired speaking, you start writing, reading, and then writing. So in terms of language learning abilities, listening comes first. Oh. So in, in terms of faculties, we don't know. Probably much before smell. I believe, you know, tactile, we call it touch. I think uh, at, because the very fact that the child is in the womb, the first point of, uh, you know, any faculty is they develop to develop the faculty of touch. So probably, I mean, commonsensically speaking and intuitively speaking, much before the olfactory, the, the you know, the smell thing comes, the touch, the tactile uh, faculty the child gains because it's already there. Much before it comes out, it's already developed that touch, the warmth and all that, right? So probably that's a faculty that goes with it. But in terms of language learning, listening is definitely, you know, it comes fast. Yes, there may be difference of opinions because there is, these are all empirical. Uh, I do not know whether any uh, structured study has been made which can conclusively say anything about it. But can you come back to your slide number 7? Yeah. Uh, you Where you are showing the listening of um, uh, listening and cognitive processes. Okay, I see. Where you were showing the P P uh, PET and MRI pictures. The Im Im images, right? Yes, yes, okay. this is. So, you made this point at rest and then while listening. Uh, a very interesting image, you know, of course, uh, these are the images that are already available. Now, look at this. this. I mean, isn't it very amazing? You wanted to draw attention to something? Yes, here it is. So, uh, you have shown at rest while listening. You made a point, very clear cut point between hearing and listening. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then you speaking. The first one can you can call it hearing because even when you are at rest, some noise keeps falling onto you or not. So okay. you can even classify these two pictures as one is at hearing, the other is at listening. <laughs> <laughs> and the speaking is uh, even more complex. Sorry, is speaking. Yes, yeah, spe no. I don't have the images to sh say that. I, mean, I see. show that. This is just to, I mean, show the complexities of listening. I brought in this image. I really wish I could show listening and uh, reading and writing. All Probably right. that's altogether a different study. You know, look okay. at the complexities involved here. You know, look at various permutations and combinations. Of course, we can only see through different, uh, you know, patterns and colors and all that. Still, we can get, you know, a picture of the complexity involved here, right? How yes. beautifully this image can capture the range of activities the brain is capable of, uh, you know, involving in when it is, uh, you know, listening to something. Yes, these pictures are really beautiful, Komlesha, because the blood, blood vessels are, I mean, being shown very actively in these pictures, very, very active. I love these, seeing these pictures. It's for the first time, probably for the first time I am seeing it. Anyway, I, I will ask one more question before I hand it over to my friend Harpreet here. Uh, you made a point in the beginning itself, the, uh, the capability or the abilities of listening the words and then uh, ability to speak the words. You said nearly 500 words, uh, am I right? 500 words you can yeah, speak here. Let us say we can speak our, I mean our ability to speak is about 150 words, maximum 150 words a minute. Our ability to listen is about 750 words a minute. So, is this uh, empirically, is this, uh, I mean, if we consider the persons are, I mean, healthier, they are good in health, 
uh, is this the does this number change with the age or uh, these are yeah, yeah of course see this is an average thing see it depends on person to person obviously if you make a teacher speak they will at least speak 25 words more than an average person right because they will even come up with 200 words or a public speaker this is an average thing of course it depends on age it depends on the you know how quick you are with your tongue it depends on your you know reading the various other factors involved there so you know, here is the point we, so here is here is the point we science student make the reaction time yeah the reaction time and this reaction time where we I, I can show you experimentally I have done mm. these experiments several times experimentally I can show that reaction time depends on age and reaction time depends uh, I, I mean uh, very <laughs> interestingly the reaction time of women is lesser than the reaction type of the men on an average. Uh -huh. I am not very sure about it. Of course, no, I have done this experiment. Uh, we have done this experiment empirically over 10,000 children, 10,000 persons. And um, um, my reaction time for that example is really 0 0.67 seconds or so, okay. uh, roughly 0 0.67 or 0 0.7 seconds or so. Uh, but I am sure the lady sitting beside me, uh, the reaction time is roughly half a second, that is 0 0.5 seconds or so. <laughs> I mean, this is how we have done. Uh, well, I can understand these things. So, now I give uh, to uh, her Gagan, to No, Gagan, just a point here. In fact, that I mean, uh, let us forget, uh, you know, whether that is accurate or not. But in fact, uh, that is when we are listen, when we listen to anything, even when you are watching a YouTube video, sometimes you must have seen many people increasing the speed to twice, 1.5 times. So, even that, I mean, that shows that we can, I mean, we can, we can process that information. So the there the difference between listening and speaking was was used to say that you know listening is much faster than of course uh, you know speaking thing. In fact, that's uh, that's the point there. Uh, yeah, that varies as you said. Of course, that varies. Uh, you know, there are various other factors involved there. Yeah, uh, Harmeet, it's a pleasure. Yeah. Because Thank I, I'm you. Open to, Thank yeah. you so much, sir. Actually, uh, I'm an anchor and I'm supposed to ask questions. But today the energy was such that I only felt like listening to you. And before the questions were coming to my mind, as uh, Gagan sir said, you know, you were already answering them. So I really would like to thank you for your immense contribution to the session. It was a wonderful presentation and I'm going to keep it saved in my archive so that I can refer to it anytime when I need to learn the art of listening. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's really a pleasure. Uh, in fact, I really look forward to interacting with you more. Absolutely, Thank you, sir. Sure. Dr. Sahib, it's a pleasure to you and it's a pleasure to listen to you. It's a pleasure to listen to you. It's a pleasure to listen to you. I mean, so well. Uh, it's Thank great. you all the listeners. It's really a pleasure. In fact, I really hope it's, uh, you know, it's going to when we I mean, you're going to incorporate at least some of the strategies and Absolutely. it really has the capacity to, to bring in success both in your personal and professional life. Thank you. Thank yes. Lovely to be we, back in with We will meet you. again and get well soon. <laughs> we'll meet Thank again you. and get well soon. Sasha. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So, friends, uh, today's show was on the art of listening. Uh, you please recall that on July, in July, we had uh, Professor Harsh Kumar Gupta here in our studios who spoke about the resilient earthquake earthquake resilient society he is coming back to us on 25th of october and now he will be speaking on the south antarctica wow. the south the, the building up of uh, gangotri station at antarctica amazing professor harsh gupta was the team leader uh, in the in that expedition to Antarctica, which was the third expedition of India and the first expedition which built the station there at Darshan Gangotri in Antarctica. That was in 1984. So, he will be with us and you are going to have another exciting session, very exciting session with, uh, with a young man called Professor Harsh K. Gupta here. Looking forward to meeting you again on Friday 25th Absolutely. of October at the same time 10 o'clock. 
Absolutely, sir. Night. And uh, with that, uh, I also would like to thank you for your contribution to the session. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And now, viewers, it's time for me uh, to wrap up this excellent session that we had today on tuning in, leveling up the art and craft of listening. But before I leave the studio, uh, let's take a look at today's live schedule, what all sessions we are going to bring for you. So let's have a look at the screen. So in a short while from now, uh, approximately after an hour, you will watch another session of ours that will be based on teaching learning interventions and uh, after that at uh, 2 p.m. we will bring you a session in Hindi titled Kabir Ke Sabad and at 2.30 p.m. we will have a session on science uh, titled Force and Laws of Motion. Then at uh, 3 p.m. we will bring you a session on geography where we will be talking about minerals and uh, at uh, 3.30, you can watch a session on mathematics titled Area and Perimeter. Well, 4 p.m. will be the time for our online training sessions where today we will be talking about these digital apps and games and much more. And after that, uh, 5 p.m. will be the time for the session Sahyog. And that will be followed by an interesting session by School Leadership and Development that is NCSL by NEPA. So with this, it's a wrap. This is me, Harpreet Kaur, taking leave of you and looking forward to see you soon. Till then, take care. Namaskar.